You may not know that although it is said that codex guidelines, regulations, and standards which have been ratified are voluntary, they are not voluntary. That is known as a lie. They are mandatory, but they are not fully mandatory until December 31st, 2009. They're sort of kind of a little bit mandatory now, and they're totally mandatory then. Okay, so what does Codex do? Why do I care enough about Codex to close my practice and stop treating patients who came to me from around the world to help them regain their health and be radiantly well with non-toxic means, which is a very satisfying thing to do. I love it. And it also provided me with an income. I, that was nice. Um, why am I concerned enough? Okay, let's talk about the vitamin and mineral guideline first. In 1994, here in the United States, DSHEA, the Dietary Supplements Health and Education Act, was passed, which classifies nutrients and herbs as foods. As foods, you can set no upper limit on them. You cannot set an upper limit on lettuce, lamb, or rutabagas. And similarly, you cannot set an upper limit on vitamin C, echinacea, ginkgo biloba, vitamin D. And access to nutrients is freely given to us. We are allowed to have any nutrients we want because, and this is a very important point, under common law, anything not forbidden is permitted. Codex, on the other hand, is a Napoleonic Code law system. Under Napoleonic Code, anything not permitted is forbidden. That's called a positive list. So, vitamins and nutrient, minerals. In 1994, we passed a Shea. Nutrients are foods. We can have as much of them as we want. It's our business. In 1994, Codex, with no notice here in this country whatsoever, declared nutrients, put on your intellectual seatbelts, declared nutrients to be toxins. They're poisons. Dangerous industrial poisons. As poisons, we have to be protected from them. How do you protect somebody from a poison? You use toxicology. You use a science called risk assessment. A quick primer on risk assessment. First you take the substance that's poisonous and you feed it to animals and you determine the dose that kills 50% of them. That's called the LD50. Okay? And you extrapolate what the LD50 for a human being might be. Then you go down to the other end of the dosage range and you start feeding itty bitty tiny bits of it to test animals. And you come up with the largest possible dose, the maximum permissible upper limit, that can be fed to an animal before a discernible impact is shown. Okay? No discernible impact. Then you divide that by 100. That's how they do it in risk assessment. And now you've got a safety margin. So you've got one one hundredth of the dose that can be given, the largest dose that can be given with no discernible impact. Okay? Nutrients under codex not only are limited to those nutrients on the positive list, and we anticipate there will be 18 of them, and they do not include CoQ10, glucosamine, chondroitin sulfate. They do include fluoride, which to my knowledge as a physician has absolutely no biological benefit whatsoever. But it does make people complacent. Fluoride was first used in the gulag because it was discovered that prisoners who were fed fluoridated water were complacent and you could do anything you wanted to them. They were easy to manage. So you have 18 nutrients. You have itty bitty, teeny weeny, little bitty doses that are determined scientifically to have no effect on any human being. Now, in this country, we have a problem. We have Deshay. We've got to get rid of Deshay in order to harm Onais with Codex. 
that part of Codex anyway. So how do we get rid of Deshay? We attack it legislatively, of course. And there are five, count them, five bills currently before Congress designed to overturn, gut, invalidate, and otherwise get rid of Deshay. Because once Deshay is gone, we can harmonize with a vitamin and mineral guideline. So what we're talking about is waking up one morning and being very surprised to find that high-potency, therapeutically effective, clinically significant nutrients are now illegal in the way that heroin is illegal. Not available with a prescription, illegal. If these nutrients have any impact on the human body, they are illegal. That's just the vitamin and mineral guideline. Let's talk about milk. We have recombinant bovine growth hormone, and now we can choose milk with it or milk without it, butter with it, butter, butter without it, right? Not under Codex, because under Codex, every dairy cow on the planet must be treated with Monsanto's recombinant bovine growth hormone. Furthermore, under Codex, every animal used for food on the planet, whether it has fins, feet, or feathers, every animal on the planet must be treated with subclinical antibiotics. Must be treated with subclinical antibiotics and must be treated with exogenous growth hormones. Codex requires, mandates, that all food be irradiated unless it's eaten locally and raw. All food, including organic food, of course. So is it organic afterwards? Well, of course, the organic standards are incredibly low. The organic standards allow a farmer to use veterinary drugs, including growth hormones, antibiotics, etc., on animals, and then at his whim, reclassify them as organic, but farmers are our friends and they would never do that, right? Right. Codex sets limits for the dangerous industrial chemicals that you can have in your food. And the limits are incredibly high. Go to Codex Alimentarius, do a Google search, and look, you know, there are drop-down menus at the top of the official Codex page. Look at the toxins and the veterinary chemicals and the levels that are set. They are terrifying to me. Terrifying. The names of the chemicals that are permitted and the amounts of the chemicals that are permitted are terrifying to me. Why am I terrified? Well, perhaps I'm just a cowardly person. It's possible. Think about this. In 2001, 176 countries, including the United States, got together and they said there are 12 really bad organic chemicals. They're called POPs, Persistent Organic Pollutants. There are a lot of them, but there are 12 that are so bad that nobody could disagree that those 12 POPs had to be banned worldwide. Nine of the 12 worst organic chemicals known are pesticides, not surprisingly, because they kill things. And, of course, we have many um, uh, processes and enzyme systems that are very much like insects and other pests, so they're not too good for us. But Codex has different ideas. Codex has brought back seven, seven of the nine forbidden POPs that 176 countries Banned worldwide. Dieldrin, aldrin, hexachlorobenzene. And the food that is imported from other countries that contains these substances cannot be stopped at our borders because otherwise it would be, God forbid, a trade violation. That's how Codex works. Codex according to the World Trade Organization and the Food and Agriculture Organization joint projections, 
Now, I didn't make this up. Please, if you unfastened your intellectual seat belts, put them back on again. If you do the numbers in the WHO-FAO projections, the epidemiological projections, they estimate, not I, because what do I know?